This is that gets my go. There, I said it. Happy now? Zija. You are. Uh... Hey, folks, this is Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. And this is that gets my goat, isn't it? I believe so, yes. What did you want to talk about? Nothing much. I don't know. We could talk about things that we enjoyed as children. Okay. We do that sometimes. Candy. Yes. I still enjoy that, even as an adult. A little too much, sir. Pizza. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I don't think I could have enjoyed it as much as a kid as I do as an adult. Because you weren't able to buy it yourself. Now you can go and buy it whenever you want. It's funny how that kind of happens. You become an adult and things that you loved and you went crazy for, you don't get so worked up about it anymore. Like we talked about Halloween and how you go from house to house to house to house just desperately trying to fill this thing up with candy. And you get home and you've got like a bowl full of candy. But as an adult, you look at that bowl full of candy and you think, I could go to the store right now. And buy that bowl full of candy for 10 bucks or less, probably way less. And it would be just the kinds that I like. And it would be just the kinds that you like. And you wouldn't have to walk for hours and go to hundreds of houses to get that much candy, you know? It just kind of takes some of the magic out of Halloween for some reason when you realize that... I guess, but you're not going from house to house getting candy. Your kids are, and True. you should be seeing it through with their eyes. Oh, I do. And it's like, look, Daddy, look what I got. Somebody gave me a tampon, and I'm five. It's like, which house did that, son? I, I, do, <laughs> yeah. I do like that. I mean, I totally love to see the fun that they have, and that's the cool part about it. But, you know, they just seem so obsessed with candy. And you look at it, and you realize, you know, kids, if you just did your chores a little bit, you know, you'd have enough money to buy all this candy easy. And way less time than it would take you to go and do all this. But, you know, it's just when you become an adult, you have a job. And so you have to have money and those kind of things. Just It's, it's like birthday presents and things like that, you know. How, how do you buy a birthday present for an adult that they're really going to care about? When they're kids, they don't have money to buy these big things that they want. And they only get them once a year on their birthday. But when you're an adult... You need something, you need a pair of pants, or you need new clothes, or you need whatever, you go and you get it. You don't just wait until your birthday comes around, or your mom finally says, oh crap, all your pants are too short for you. Gonna have to get you some new ones, I guess. Yeah, I I hear you on that. Uh, My nephew is really into video games right now, and I think he would enjoy nothing more than to play video games for six, seven, eight, nine hours straight. Mm-hmm. And his parents won't do it with him because they've got things to do. They're parents. Right. But I don't have any kids. And so <laughs> I'm the go to guy of let's play the video games thing. But after like a 45 minutes to an hour, the guilt starts to creep into me where it's like, you know, I, I should be working. I should be finishing Dead of Tetramana. I should be all these things that I should be doing that I'm not. And that takes away some of the fun. Whereas as a kid, none of that ever enters in. Right. Part of it is you think that you're going to be young forever. Yeah. And you're in school too. And so anytime you're not in school, it's freedom. Right. Time doesn't go by as fast as it used to. You know, you were talking with me last week about the Avengers cartoon yeah. uh, series that's going on. And so I thought, Earth's oh. Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Just canceled, by the way. Oh, was it? I thought, oh, I'll I'll sit down with my kids and we'll watch the first one of those because they have it on Netflix. So we sat down, we watched the first couple of them and they're like, oh, those are really cool. And next morning, my daughter got up, my youngest daughter, and she put on the one with Hulk on that we'd watched the night before and watched it again. And I got ready for work and went to work. And when I came home, they were watching like episode 25 or something like that. And they'd watched the TV show Every episode from where we'd left off all the way up until the the last episode, they spent the entire day watching this series. They watched the whole series in a day. And, you know, those are the kind of things you can do when you're a child and you cannot do when you're an adult. You just don't have a day to do something like that ever. We have talked about many times that when we were kids, you'd watch shows that you hated 
just because they were on TV or they were on before a show that you liked, you would sit through it multiple times. It's like, oh, shoot, here's that episode of Small Wonder that I've already seen, but I'm going to sit through it just so I can get to... Uh, not this episode know, of Benson again. Uh, I guess I have to sit through it to get to growing pains. I think about that now and I just shudder. It's like, why would you have done that? You know, it's like, it's the 80s. This is the happiest time of your life. Get up and do something. Don't watch that again. Go outside for a half hour. Ride your bike. Do something interesting. And I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. And I hate it when I have to. Like, you know, I'll go over to my friend's house. And before he turns his attention to me, you know, he has to finish whatever he was watching with his wife or with his kids or, or you know, he's into sports. And, so, you know, it's like we got to watch the rest of the rugby match and all that. And I just go out of my skin because I feel myself getting older, closer to death. And I don't want to do this. Sure and there are impressed. other things that I could be doing that I should be doing, things that I've left undone. But I can't get to him because I'm stuck right there. It's like when you're stuck in traffic. Yeah. And maybe it's only three minutes or something like that. But it's the worst three minutes of your life. Or we always talk about the moment you most want to write is when you're someplace you can't. Right. You know, I'm in, I'm in a board meeting and there's 23 more minutes to go. And I just, I, I, oh, I have this great idea. Why can't I be writing it? Oh, because you can't. It sucks. To be an adult and to have these things go through your mind. And a lot of people around me have either put away all childish things and their business 100% of the time, in which case I don't want to have anything to do with them. Or they've got arrested development and, and, and then they, they don't care. They, they can slack off, spend $80 and then I get so drunk that they don't remember any of it. And it's fine. You know, it's like there's no consequences. There's no Jewish guilt. There's nothing going on telling them that life is finite and you're wasting it. It's something we talked about just last week and didn't make the show. Right. Anyhow, I mentioned the video games thing. As a kid, I could play these video games for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I never felt like it was a waste of time. And now it's not really something I have nostalgia for. I look at some of those games and I'm like, wow, how could I have ever thought that that was fun? <laughs> uh, it, it's weird you know there's certain things I was like wow that's always going to be fun I will always sit down and watch Empire Strikes Back I don't care your dad is breathing out his last in the next room and it's like yeah yeah but it's the ad at scene but one thing that I loved when I was a kid was laser tag oh okay they came out with that in like 86 or 87 and it was a very short lived fad in the 80s I, I, I guess they still sell them at Toys R Us's or whatever so it didn't really? completely go away huh. but it was something that hit hard and fast like Manchi cheese or something. And my friends and I were all in that age group where that was, ooh, this is the cool new thing. And we all got into laser tag really briefly. And they cost a ton of money. I, I, I don't even know what they would have cost. Yeah, they were always prohibitively expensive for me. So. Because you had 24 siblings. Yeah, we had no, uh, I had no money. I wasn't able to buy anything that was even remotely expensive, but these were very expensive. If you had strangled your twin in utero like I did, yeah. you wouldn't have had yeah, that Yeah, that might have might have worked out a little better for me. But yes, because it was a very small point, part of my childhood and then it ended and it just went away. And I think my mom gave all of my laser tag stuff to my cousins and, you know, they used it to pound nails and stuff. I never got sick of it. It just ended. One day it was gone. And I always looked back on that with nostalgia. So you had told me, hey, why don't we go do laser tag sometime? There's this place really close to where we meet for lunch. Right. Just up the street. And you said, if we go uh, after a certain time or something, it's free. So let's go. And I knew that we never really were going to do it. You know, it's like <laughs> the movies that we say that we're going to make or the episodes that we're going to do, or, you know, all these lofty story collaborations that are never going to happen. I knew we weren't going to do it, but we did. Yeah, we did it today. Right before we came over, we uh, headed over there and had ourselves a couple games of laser tag. It was an a interesting time. I had a good time. I don't know. And you had done it before. I have, yeah. I've done it with my kids several times. And so. did you do it as a boy? Did they have places where you could go and do laser tag in a maze and stuff like this? I was never able to do it as a boy. I think probably the closest that I was ever able to come to that was maybe squirt guns. Because that's sort of like laser tag where you can actually squirt somebody with something. There's a hit. There, there was a time when the molester chased you around in the woods. 
that was kind of like that too. Yeah, I guess. But the squirt guns is, is a better analogy. Never mind. Forget I said uh, that. The squirt guns was kind of similar to the molester in the end. Yeah, well, that's all right. I'll cut this part out. <laughs> no one need ever know. But yeah, I, when I was too old to be into that, I really got into squirt guns too. And I bought a whole bunch of super soakers and wrote a movie about super soakers that you might remember that we tried to shoot more than once. and It was really good, man. Never uh, managed to uh, complete... I did one time in college. You know, I was just experimenting. <laughs> was it Ian or Rob? <laughs> now, one time we all went to a laser tag arena thing or whatever. That it was the first time that I ever saw a place to go and do laser tag. It seemed like laser tag when we were kids, and you know the the thing you talked about where you could buy them at Toys R Us. Those are things that you had at home. And you played with them and people would play them in the woods at night and then police would be called out and they'd accidentally shoot the child. That's the, what I remember about laser tag. I think I may have had one friend that had laser tag and I may have played with him a couple of times at his house. But later on, it became a thing where you went to a laser tag arena and you played laser tag at this place and they had, you know, walls all set up and things, places to go and hide and be able to shoot at each other and stuff like that. But they were still, again, it was expensive. You know, you got a 10 or 15 minute game and it cost you like 10 bucks. 15 minutes for 10 bucks is pretty steep. And so it wasn't something we were going to do a lot. But we did go and do it once and it was fun. I really enjoyed myself. This was in college you're talking yes. about? Yes. Didn't go back again because I didn't have money to be spending $10 for 15 minutes of you entertainment. You were buying rings. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> So, yeah, I uh, didn't go back again until recently when we got this place that we, me and you went to this evening. I have been doing a lot with my nephews and my niece. And the whole time I was thinking, would they enjoy this? I can't wait to bring the kids. I, it's weird. I, I almost think of them as my kids to do this. And that would be fun. And, and hopefully it would be fun. Uh, part of it, I mean, you and I have just gotten old and fat and I was sweating really bad, especially <laughs> the second too. time. And I didn't know, is it because I'm fat? Is it because it was super hot in there? Or is it because of the adrenaline of, you know, look out, look out. Yeah. Oh, no, right there. And, and I think it was a little of all. It was pretty hot, especially that stupid little room that they show you the rules, instructions video at the start. That was one friggin' hot room. And they had a crap load of people all packed into it. And they were as sweaty and disheveled and smelly as us. No, yeah, more so. That was good. Yeah, I think it's got a lot to do with that. It's a, in the summer, it was a second story room and et cetera. So there was that. I don't know. I think a lot of it also has to do with just being fat and running around. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> and yeah, that's just something that I got to deal with for the rest of my short life. But yes, they sat us down in this room and they showed us this video and I guess they tried to make it entertaining. But you and I are really nitpicky about stuff like that because we have made instructional videos before. We have made videos for entertainment before and the sound quality was especially bad and, and that's something we're all about because we do it in our spare time. Yeah, it would have been nice if they used something, anything other than the on-camera mic that came with their camcorder. The video looked nice, though. I mean, it was all... Riddled lit. with typos? Yeah, well, there was that. But it was lit well. It never looked like just garbage. Oh, so you think they actually had a lighting setup? I don't know if they had a lighting setup or not, or if they just turned the lights on or something like that. But it never looked too dark to be able to tell what was going on or, or really grainy, you know, what you get when you have to crank the gain up to be able to uh, see in a dark room when you don't have lights. They had built a maze that had more than one level, or how how should I put it? Yeah, it had ramps that would go up to higher up perches you could get into with your gun and pick people off, I guess. And it, the maze seemed so massive to me that there were places that neither of us ever went. Yeah, probably. And I lost you at the very beginning. And I didn't find you again until it was over. Although you said that I ran past you and didn't know that it was you. Yeah, you did one time run past me. You went, oh, same team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and, and that was another thing. See, I, I had never done this. When I was a kid, 
the laser tag thing was just that there were there were no settings for teams or anything. It was just a sensor that would go off, and I think you could be shot five times and then you were dead. It would make a big noise and you couldn't get shot anymore. And so you would just put those on and you would do a free for all, or we would have teams or something like that. And my best experience was my friend Stephen's grandma had a farm. And we went out there like one summer or fall or spring or, you know. Or winter? Probably not winter. Oh, so and, any, anything but winter? You know, it's probably summer because there was like tall corn and grasses and things like that you could hide in. And, and we just played in the whole area. And uh, it's one of my best memories of childhood was just us playing for hours and hours and uh one of those things where because it's so much time has gone by, I've built it up in my mind of how great that time was. And, you know, if you could go back in a time machine, you'd be like, wow. see that it really sucked. Yeah, that's kind of The whole how... time you had dog crap on your shoe and it just smelled awful. Oh, you had a so wedgie. That's how life is, though. Like I said in the final episode of the Dune Steef, one day we'll look back on now and we'll be like, oh my gosh, those were the best days. Even though I was miserable, we were distance makes you lose perspective on, 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 on how things were. But anyhow, that's always been my memory for laser tag was just this big fun thing where there were four or five of us and we just ran around and, uh, until it got dark and, and then said, you know, let's do this again. And we never did. <laughs> and maybe that's part of what makes that memory so special is we never got to go and have it not be as fun as the last time and say, hey, let's not do this anymore. It's always better to leave them wanting more. It's always better to leave the party before you want to than stay an hour later than you should have. And with this, there were teams and everybody had light sensors where you could shoot them that glowed different colors. And the, the four or five different colors were the different teams and you couldn't shoot somebody that was on your team even though i think i tried you tried lots i did too and there was this sensor kind of like when your phone is on vibrate that when you got shot you'd feel it uh -huh. and you'd be immobilized for five seconds and then you would come back to life and your gun would light up again and you get to get shot again in my case so to me it was so much better than the 20 something year old memory of laser tag. But also there were so many people right. that many times I would get shot and I didn't know where it was coming yeah, from. Yeah. I think that may have been some of those people in the upper levels. Sometimes I'd be there and I'd get shot and there was nothing. Yeah. The team thing and, and there'd be lots of people and you, I guess you got a score for accuracy. Right. How many of your shots actually hit something. I didn't, even realize until tonight that there even was such a score maybe there wasn't that score before and this is a new thing because other times that i've played there was four colors and often they would only put in three colors They'd, because there wasn't enough people they would just give you three teams and only do three colors well that would have been good because there was one team that had two people on it and right. then other teams that had like eight or nine people on them yeah in this case i think they had at least five colors Sadly, it was really hard to find the color you were supposed to be because they they had lighted little things that your vest would hang on. And they were still the old colors from the old game or the old vest they had or whatever. And so and they didn't it, match yeah, the new colors. It was really confusing. You'd go and you'd see, oh, there's green. And you'd go to get the green and then you'd realize, oh, this is orange or this is cyan or whatever all their... Uh, sorry, cayenne. Oh, gosh. Sorry, we got to correct you. There was a guy that corrected the instructor that it was pr pronounced cayenne. It's like, no, sir, that's that's the peppers. Those are pronounced cayenne. You've got the wrong word. I don't know. That was a little confusing to f actually find. I think the one time we went to the wrong team, they told us to be a certain team. And I think we went to a completely different team. That's true. Uh, by accident. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I don't know. There was some some crazy bits. I, you know, you you do have that problem where you're running through the maze and you're getting shot from somewhere. You have no idea where. Like that happened to me a couple of times. I get shot and I'm looking around and there's absolutely no one. I could not see a single person in any direction. Where did I get shot from? I could not figure it out. I even looked up. But uh, there was other times, you know, where I was running through and I was just like, 
okay, I'm sick of this. I'm going to where all the people are and I'm just going to go Rambo style or something. So I went running in and it was actually really fun. It was like that moment on uh, Star Wars where Han Solo's in the Death Star and he's just like, oh, screw this. And he just turns around, starts yelling and goes running and shooting at everything. And the stormtroopers are like, ah, and they turn and start running. You know, their battalion of stormtroopers is running from this one crazy dude who's just decided to turn the tables and it was kind of like that i just went running through this maze and i was shooting and everybody as they came out would get shot before they could shoot me and so i kept hitting people hitting people and i'd run in and i ran for like a minute and a half just going crazy like this shooting and going all the way through and i wound up in the end coming into this kind of a dead end area in the maze where a bunch of kids that were all on the same team had like hold up and they'd like claimed this as like their spot and i came wandering into this as though i was the dumb fish that wandered into the eels trap or whatever you see on those uh nature videos you know i come wandering into this and i shot the first one of them and then i came around the corner and i managed to shoot all four of these kids before any of them shot me and they were so pissed off that i had just barged into their place wow. and killed them all off and they're like no oh! and they were waiting because you had to wait five seconds after you've been shot then you come back on and they were all ready to just jump me and they're like had kind of surrounded me and they were ready to get me when they all turned back on and i was like whoa and then steadily they turned on and i killed them all one more time and wow. then backed out of there and ran for it these and, were uh, blind children they? <laughs> it was just lucky you know it was it was like you were saying about uh, in movies sometimes aside from going for it instead of not going for it that was really my only uh strategy but it was fun you know and as i was running away and trying to find a spot to hide from them before they came back active the second time one of them managed to shoot me in the back so i didn't live forever unfortunately but now but you, well, you went on soloing after these people <laughs> the first rule of fight club no the first rule they gave us was that you couldn't run i and wasn't running i was moving quickly i i wouldn't say i wouldn't call what i was doing a run really oh okay well because I, I i got called out by one of the the referees referees yeah I, I didn't know what they call the people and i guess he has some way of turning you off or whatever and i was just like hey what the hell just happened and this guy was saying something to me and i afterward i assumed well it must have been that i was running because mm. i would forget and there'd be like nine people there all wanting to shoot me and i'd go ah Right. kind of thing i don't know I, I my guess is that these kids go there all the time and they know the best places right to hang out they're like the campers on those shooting games on a halo or whatever that just frustrate everybody else because they just sit there and not and snipe people but the only thing that would have made that more fun is if we had had a big group and everybody on our team was with us right and we would have known people because you, you couldn't have said stick stick with me and oh well let's go down here you guys split up or whatever they wouldn't listen to you yeah we didn't know anybody but each other in this uh, particular game that we went to maybe another time at the very least if we go when we go again we'll have to work as a team and see if we can go and find people like the campers you know, you, you talked about you went up to one of those kind of nests or whatever you might call it up above. Yeah, it's like some kind of sniper tower thing. And there was like nine people just sitting there shooting out of the little windows in it. And you went running in there to try and get them and they shot you right away. Then you went away and then you came back in and they shot you right away again. But if you had more people, then you could roust them out of there. It would be fun to try and mount an assault and go in there and make those people leave that place well, because they get frustrated that you're just standing there waiting to come back on and shoot them again. The difference between this and the paintball episodes of Community or whatever is uh -huh. when somebody gets shot, they're dead. They're out of it or whatever. Right. And on this, it's not like that. You know, Just for five seconds, then they come back. And there's not really any... I mean, nobody is ever out of the game. You know, you can't clear somebody out of the nest because they've got no incentive to move. It's like, okay, the guy shot me, but I shot him. Ha! Uh, five seconds later, I can do it again. And so, yeah, I would just have to leave. But when you killed all those people in, you know, your little Han Solo move, 
that should have been just some epic, awesome moment of triumph. <laughs> but it's an um, inconvenience to these kids for not even 30 seconds. Right. And they do keep scores. Right. Um, and they give, you know, high scores. But I don't think there are any prizes for the. There's no consequences for coming in last. And no, there is. They actually uh, take that person into where they cook the pizzas and they burn them with the hot pans if you come in last. So it really is. It's it's bad. <laughs> There was like a little four-year-old girl playing there and she yeah. got zero. I saw the score, but, it, you know, I didn't see her the second game. All right. There you good go. Point. But there were so many people, especially the first game, that we couldn't even see who the winner is. I didn't even see the numbers. And, and you know, it's not like you can type in your name and say, oh, you know, Jerry got 45 kills or whatever the deal is. They're just set code names and there were so many people, and that was another thing. There were so many people that you were getting shot every 10 seconds or something like mm -hmm. that. And the second time, there were far, far fewer people. And I enjoyed the second time way more because you, you could actually have something of a strategy. And there was nothing worse than your sensor saying that you'd just gotten shot and there's nobody. Right. You don't know where the people are. But yeah, I would like to do it again with a bunch of kids or yeah. topless girls you know something topless like that girls would be nice yeah maybe the next time i could bring my kids and you could bring your uh, nephews and your niece and we could try and make a team out of it although maybe the one-year-old might be hard to uh, be part of the team we might want to yeah he probably couldn't come yeah we might want to leave him out but the the, the four-year-old he could probably be part of the team he could follow some basic strategic instructions Maybe we could use him as the bait. We put him out in front of the, the campers in the nest and they get him and then we come out while they're all occupied. <laughs> After all, there's no uh, punishment if you get shot a bunch of times and come in last. <laughs> that, but that would be fun. I, th I think that they would really enjoy it. And you know, it goes back to the you know showing a movie that's really important to you, to your kids right. and them thinking, doing the jerk off motion. What movie was it, by the way? That you showed him and you're like, oh, kids, this movie delighted me so much as a little boy. I had a really hard time growing up and, you know, because I had 47 siblings and no parents. And <laughs> Was it Big this, Trouble in Little China? Was it, there was something of, that you showed him and there's like, Jesus, dad, this movie fuck. And you're like, what? The? And then that was the five-year-old, you know, the, the, the older two, they hated it more. But uh, I hope not. I, I would think that just the, the team aspect and the, the spirit sport ish you know the, the competitiveness <laughs> there's something neat about that and about a sense that we beat the other guys or you know we gave it our all and and yeah that that adrenaline that was pumping when i was you know being chased and all that stuff that it's real wow your body doesn't know that this isn't going to hurt when it shoots you I, I don't know i just i love that i did do paintball uh, oh yeah when i was I've done that in, too when i was a teenager in my 20s and when you got hit and it hurt, you know, that was an incentive not to get hit. It again. sure was. But I thought that that was far less fun than the laser tag thing. It just yeah. uh, Part of it was that it was dirty. And, and then another part was that it was so expensive that there were people that took it seriously and, you know, would aim for the junk. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It makes me want to watch the paintball communities Episodes, again. Yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you for suggesting that we do this thing. I, I did think it was one of those things that we'd just talk about and never do. And so maybe we'll accomplish all our goals now. Yes, we probably will. Oh, did I forget to complain? I was supposed to complain about something. That's what this, that gets my goat is all about. Oh, we, did you have a complaint? Um, the, the Madagascar 3 trailer is really, really annoying. The, the, the circus Afro thing. Apparently people think that's really funny. Again, we deserve to go extinct. China, take <laughs> us over. Put us in chains. Yeah, the trailer is really bad. All right, thanks for listening. I've been Rich Outfield. And I've been Big Anklevich. Good night. See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. Oh, you know, something we need to do again is make a top five list and compare them sometime in a future episode. Sure. I mean, maybe we should do that on Pixar, our uh, our brave episode. We'll do our five favorite Pixar movies, or maybe that's too limiting because we're both going to say the same five. Do you think we would both say the same five? 
I don't know. We probably have several that were the same, but probably not all the same. <laughs>